Thank you, Ben, for the kind introduction. Uh, first, I apologize. I cannot participate in this wonderful workshop in person because just this week, I, 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 I will just organize another workshop in my institute. Oh, okay, okay, come to my talk. Uh, I will talk something slightly different from, uh, like, uh, from usually what I talked before. Like uh, today, I will talk about topology and chirality in chiral materials, especially chiral molecules, something like DNA. Uh, before the talk, first, I thank wonderful and inspiring discussion <clears throat> with uh, my Weizmann colleagues, Yuva Adi, and also Jun Wang from Tsinghua University. I, I, I think he's also in the audience. Uh, and then also experiment collaboration with my wife and my colleagues, also Peng Xiong from Florida and uh, <clears throat> Li Wan and Matthew Fuster from Empire College. And all this work has been done by my postdocs and, <clears throat> and students in my group here. Uh, okay, let's start. Like uh, what I have been working on understanding topological materials or predict materials with interesting topological properties and uh, after knowing so many materials, uh, they, they, they give us a lot of different uh, flavor of topology. I start to ask, uh, like, uh, what's the consequence of this topological band structure? That's motivated me to think about the light mater material interaction, especially nonlinear coupling. And uh, today I will talk about actually is a new direction recently I started to think about is the chirality. The chirality, especially related in, in chemistry, this is chi chiral atomic structure. And what's the consequence of the chirality in electronic property? And what I will show you about there, there might be interesting topology driven by these chiral structures. And let's see, like in kinesmetic physics, we are very familiar on the right, this part, we're, we're familiar with it. We, we actually, we, we use the word chirality a lot to talk about a wire sand metal, talk about the surface states of a topological Dirac coin. And also, like uh, even in the light, we talk about the circular polarization light, for example, right-handed, left-handed, that depends on the light direction and its spin. Uh, overall, we are talking about this chirality is mainly about spin momentum locking in the momentum space. And at the same time, I always get a question from my solid state chemistry colleagues, like uh, what, what kind of chirality, for example, especially why is the metal, what I'm mentioned, it's about this chiral atomic structure on the left. Like, for example, like even from small molecular even to the DNA and to a chiral crystal, sometimes we are also, we heard about this spiral spin structure and even larger scale to, to the shape of, of the galaxy. This chirality is mainly means it's the geometry in real space. And I always explain to my colleagues, they're different. And one is real space, another is momentum space. And about at the same time, it's motivated me to think about whether these two chirality may have some connection we are just not aware. And especially some property, like uh, we, we can use the language of topology to describe them. And more important is what kind of consequence, new consequence or new phenomena we could expect. Uh, let's see, like, I really like the idea of topology or chirality, like, a, <clears throat> for example, in the wire sand metal or a Dirac coin, like on the left, the, this Dirac coin, I think I have a problem how to write on the screen, but fine, let, let's, I just give up, right. Uh, here for this Dirac coin, like, we, we see this many times, and uh, like, uh, not only is beautiful, also we, we immediately, if we see this Dirac coin with the, this spin texture, we can understand if we drive a current to go through this Dirac coin, not only there will be a current because it's a metallic, then the current actually is a spin polarized. <clears throat> and because the spin and momentum locked, we enhance the momentum in one direction, we enhance the spin polarization. Also, when we think about we copying a light to uh, this Dirac coin, like a circular, circular polarized light, Textbook tells us we shine a light, we will excite the electron hole. But here we not only consider the energy conservation, we should also consider the momentum conservation. And the light carries spin, spin h bar actually. Then the right channel will be forbidden because this is a change of minus h bar. Only the left excitation is allowed. In this, in this, in this way, we will get a left 
uh, electron moving to the left, hole moving to the right. Actually, this is a DC current. Here, by shining a, a light with the AC field of the light, we get a DC current. And actually, here, use this chiral spin structure, like all oh, this uh, chirality we, we call it. It's very easy to, to understand or predict some interesting phenomena. And then we, I, I come to like uh, this chiral molecular. When we talk to molecular, or when I try to explain the chirality idea, like a topology idea in, in, in physics, we talk about my chemistry colleague immediately asked the first question. In molecular, we don't have momentum. You always talk about momentum spin locking, but molecular, there's no momentum. That is true, but we can think in another way, like just this, Okay, molecular, electron is confined in the molecular. It cannot go away. It's different from a lattice, electron travel in a periodic lattice. We, let's mimic it as a particle in a, in a box. It's confined in a box. And for chiral molecular, simply, let's think in a way, let's twist the box, make the box chiral. And uh, we ask a quite simple question. What's how electron behave in a normal box or in a chiral box? From this chiral box picture, can we add, get some useful insight? Let's go back to the normal, go to the normal box. This is the textbook. We, maybe in the first class of quantum mechanics, we ask a student to solve under the, the wave function in the spectrum, we get the ground state, for example, the ground state. Uh, here, without thinking, we know this is how the wave function looks like. And this K, okay, this K is, the decide is the decided by the confinement by the size of the box and actually if we rewrite sine kz actually is a linear combination of two plane waves and it's a this is a two plane wave interfere with each other form a standing wave in the box yeah this is a, how we teach our students uh, then here but from the plane wave picture actually we get a first insight is actually in the molecular we do have momentum just that we don't have net momentum. The electron cannot fly out, but inside the box, actually the electron is moving left and right because they are moving like the, this, we have the interference of these two opposite motion, we get a standing wave. Uh, oh, by the way, if you have question in between, feel, feel free to interrupt. Uh, then here, first insight we get is, Inside a box, electrons are moving. Electrons, they do have some spontaneous momentum. This actually about the momentum, they always come in pair. They all, in total, they cancel each other, but the electrons do moving, they have momentum. Now let's ask, let's twist this box slightly. Let's just think it as a perturbation way. And if you think in the perturbation compared to pre, pre, this picture, we expect the wave function should not change too much. At least the profile is still something like sine KZ, but something a little more happened is the wave function will pick up a face. And this phi, phi is simply like in 3D, this, this uh, a cylinder angle. Uh, then now this wave function, mathematically we can write into two parts and like it's a superposition of two waves. Actually, this is a superposition of two chiral waves. In other words, we see plane wave is a, is a wave with orbital angular momentum zero. Uh, if we have a make it a chiral, then this orbital angular, angular momentum are not necessarily zero. And we can get one plus one minus one, uh, these values. And one summary is here in a chiral box, electron not only has momentum, also has orbital. And from the relation of the wave function, we immediately get it already actually. The, Momentum and orbital, actually they always lock together. And if we flip the momentum, the orbital will flip. Actually, this is because of time or symmetry, this would come in pair. And uh, how the, you see like, uh, actually the momentum and orbital, whether they are parallel or anti-parallel, this will depends how we twist the box. In other words, we twist the box, we give the geometry a kind of a chirality, then this chirality is transferred to the electronic wave function. Electron knows it's traveling in a chiral box. When it's traveling, it starts to pick up a self-rotation. And uh, a little remark is here, I, I write orbital L. Actually, orbit, uh, the orbital is not necessarily a conserved or quantized number. 
that depends on the detail. And the reality is there will be many, many chiral, chiral plane waves interfere with each other. Uh, a semi-classical picture we can think is, let's mimic a chiral box as this rifling lines in, in the gun, this uh, when bullet flying out of the gun, the bullet has a self-rotation, right? This self-rotation is exactly the same way how electron pick up the orbital angular momentum. And so far, okay, I like to like, uh, just make a little more clear. I, I want to define our electronic chirality. The real space chirality, just the, the geometry, but electronic chirality, let's define it in this way. If momentum and orbital, they're parallel, like the light, I call it right-handed. If they are anti-parallel, I call it left-handed. Uh, you see, if they are parallel, actually these two waves, left moving, right moving, they, they always keep parallel. If anti-parallel, they are anti-parallel. But in the ground state, I repeat, like in the ground state and all at the equilibrium state, we don't have total orbital, like we don't have total momentum. L minus L, they always cancel each other, but the electron in the box, they know they have the, they, they have the idea the box is chiral. In other words, if we have a chiral state, the electrons there, they feel like they feel there, they are always the orbital, I call it one minus one is zero. The total is zero, although, but for an chiral state, it's a trivial plane wave, it's just a zero plus zero. Uh, now, interesting question is, how can we distinguish this chiral state or an chiral state? And looks like at the ground state, it's hard to distinguish them because the ground state, the, the total orbital are always zero. Oh, by the way, here, this is a toy model picture. I will see like, actually we can concretely really get, get this orbital from any steady state of calculation. Here, I start with the example. In the box, you see, I put several benzene molecular, then I twist them between neighboring benzenes, there's slight small angle twist. Like we twist this uh, bilayer graphene. After the twist, this is a longer molecular artificial. Uh, today with any like a DFT code can calculate the energy spectrum and you will get several energy levels because this is a, not a periodic system. You, you get several energy levels, this is finite size. Fine, you will get the wave function. And uh, this is all you have. But one more, we need one more step we need to do is just separate the wave function to the left moving and right moving one. This is, I call it, uh, this is a psi plus, psi minus. Like, let's separate the wave function. As long as we decompose the wave function, what we will see is actually, this is the occupied bands. The occupied bands has an orbital. Actually, this orbital is five. You see the winding number of the face. This is the face, not the amplitude. And, it, and it, you can always get it from the DFT wave function, especially with, based on plane wave. If you go to the conduction band, you will see another different orbital. Uh, <coughs> uh, here, okay, this is a molecular system. Uh, if we can go back to a periodic system we're familiar or a one dimensional lattice, let's see, on the left is a real molecular called 3 tin helix. This is an experiment played with, with it a little. Like uh, on the right, it's just tight banding model. Like um, the main symmetry is here. We have a three-fold skew rotation, make it, make it helical. And on the left, you see the real band structure and the right, they, they're same. If I fine tune the tight banding band structure, tight banding parameter, I will get exactly the same, same dispersion. But the most important is you see the blue and the red color. The blue and the red, they represent different orbital polarization. This orbital is, uh, for example, if I use p orbital, this is actually px plus minus ipy, and not pxpy. Uh, then here, like, like the most important feature is you see, here we have well-defined crystal momentum. If we flip the momentum, we will get obviously the orbital. Here, mo orbital and the momentum, they always lock together. It's quite similar to the idea in a, in a Dirac coin of a topological insulator, there we have spin momentum locking. Uh, you see maybe there's a, some, the band crossing looks like, like a Dirac coin here, but I would say this is not the most important part. This is mainly comes from the skew symmetry. If I break this symmetry slightly, then 
there's no protection. We will see a small gap opening. But however, as long as it's chiral, we always have this uh, momentum texture there. And here I will call it this momentum, momentum orbital locking as kind of topology or weak topology for this chiral molecular. Uh, here, I don't define any like a topological index for, for, for this, like a mainly feature, but actually this is the most useful feature is this orbital momentum locking. Uh, let's see the consequence and yeah, how to detect it. Uh, I said at the equilibrium, the two orbital, two momentum, they always cancel each other. Then the idea is maybe we, drive, we should drive the system out of equilibrium. And uh, one way to detect the orbital, okay, the orbital momentum, we are very familiar with this spin, <coughs> spin angular momentum. And uh, if we have a way to couple orbital to spin, possibly, yes, we have many, many techniques to, de to detect the spin. Here we need an interaction, it's a spin orbital interaction. Yeah, without thinking, we already know. And another way is we can use another spin, the spin of light, I said, a circularly polarized light. It's, if we use the light couple to the orbital in this chiral structure, possibly we can read it out. And uh, let's go to the first, the spin part. Uh, okay, before we really go, go to the spin, let's look at this chiral box again. As I said, we have an electron moving left and right and have a, with a strong confinement, it has a very high speed. Now, suppose we have a way to let the electron flying out. If it's flying out from the right, it will carry the orbital and it will be plus polarized. If it's flying out from the left, it will be minus polarized. And in this way, actually, you see, suppose we, we have a non-polarized electron come from the left and get out from the right. Easily we expect we, we have this plus air polarized uh, state. And then here, the chiral, the, this chiral, chiral structure becomes an orbital polarizer or orbital filter and the electron goes through it, it becomes orbital polarized. If we have a way, like we have spin on the coupling to convert orbital to spin, then we can mirror the spin, right? I should go to the experiment. Actually, the, the why I think about this chiral structure is also partially motivated by experiment has been done more than 10 years ago. Actually, in recent years, this de <coughs> developed as a growing field called chirality induced spin selectivity. This experiment has been done um, by my colleague Ron Neman in Weizmann. They have done two experiments. One experiment is on the on the left figure. I okay, so not plot here. Uh, on the left figure, you see like uh, on the bottom is a gold substrate. Put a layer of DNA on top, shine light. Then there's a photon electron flying out. Then photon electron first cross this DNA layer, then flying to the vacuum. When mirror the polarization of the photon electron, we found these photon electrons are highly polarized. Actually, the polarization ratio is super high. It's like 60, 70 percent. It's much, much more than the ferromagnetic um, material. Another experiment is a transport experiment. It's in the middle figure. Sorry, I, I should use a, OK. Uh, here. Like on the bottom is a nickel, is a ferromagnet. In the middle is the DNA. On the top is the AFM tip with a good nanoparticle, good nanoparticle for, for better contact. Then they mirror the, the resistance, go through the DNA. On the right is the IV curve. Like what they can control is the magnetization in the ferromagnet magnetic layer. By flip the magnetization up and down, they find a very different resistance. In this way, looks like the DNA has some way to, be, should, to show spin polarization. Uh, then sure, this give, well, yeah, by the way, this, this phenomenon was first ob observed with the DNA, later actually is reproduced in many chiral molecular, not limited to DNA, big molecular, smaller molecular, and the, it works at room temperature. And even it's these days is started uh, about in some chiral solids and uh, give, give us very similar behavior. This is a very exciting result is like here, this chiral structure couples, looks like it's couples to the spin. And if we like chiral, couple some chiral trajectory to the spin, we know we need spin of the coupling. 
but however, we know for, for the DNA or any organic molecular, uh, the spill the coupling is negligible. At least they cannot compare with the room temperature. Uh, therefore, like uh, people think, try to th develop a lot of model to think uh, why in this, chiro in this organic system, this spin of the coupling becomes so strong. Uh, but I think in the field of topology, we know very well the, the history of graphene Although in theory, it can be a topological insulator, but in reality, and even in, yeah, in, in experiments, it's a still same metal because SOC, carbon has, SOC is too small. And this, for me, I believe that's the same for the DNA case or for this organic molecular, including carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen. Uh, then when I think about this question, I noticed, just noticed, like actually there's a fact, you already see it. They're always a heavy metal, for example, in the transport device. We have nickel, we have gold, the AFM tip actually sometimes, most of the time is uh, platinum. There's always strong spin of the coupling. Actually there, this strong spin of the coupling is enough. The rule of the, of the DNA is to provide the orbital polarization. The picture we propose is like, as I said, the, a, a chiral molecular play a role as a orbital filter if when we have electrons come from the left without the orbital polarization, without the spin polarization, it goes through the molecular, its orbital start to polarize. Then when it meets spin the coupling, actually orbital is converted to spin, to spin polarization. If the spin polarization match the ferromagnetic electrode, okay, it will have a good conductance. Otherwise, if they don't match, they will have a smaller conductance. This way, you flip the magnetization, you change the conductance or resistance. And we propose this picture. Okay, no, not only by this scenario, we, we just calculate exactly this kind of chiral structure. We, we, and there's nothing magic. We do a lot of vertical transformation. And we indeed find that there's a huge orbital polarization and spin polarization, as long well as we have some SOC from the electrode. To examine this theory, the is straightforward. If experiment has a way to change the electrode to another metal with, a, for example, with a very weak spin of coupling, and to see whether this kind of spin selectivity is enhanced or, the, or reduced or does not change. However, go to the experiment. When I talk to the experiment, the problem comes. Actually, in the experiment, there are many parts almost everywhere that spin of coupling except DNA. For example, the gold and the AFM tip, even the nickel part, although it's a ferromagnet. magnet. In a reality experiment, people use nickel as a thin film ferromagnet. There are always a layer of like five nanometer gold coupled on top of nickel to protect it. Otherwise, in air, it dies. Uh, therefore, okay, there's always gold, platinum in, in, in the device. Uh, fortunately, two years ago, I noticed there's a new experiment did by uh, Peng Xiu's group from Florida. They mirrored the same chiral molecule, similar chiral molecular, but they, they used a different, elect, different uh, electrode. So magnetic part, they use magnesium doped gallium arsenide. And another electrode is gold. And they mirror the conductance change after, uh, before and after flipping the magnetization in the gallium arsenide. And they see the, the change of the conductance to represent how strong the chirality can induce a kind of spin polarization. Uh, but I asked them, in this device, can we change gold to aluminum, copper, and some, anyway, some light element? And fortunately, Peng told me, for this device, it's pos very possible to test the different, uh, dif different electrode, at least the, the gold part, just so they didn't recognize it's relevant. And gold, after very hard working by, by his students, and they reproduce the result, they checked the gold and aluminum. First, they reproduce the gold result is on the left. This is the, the like, this is the hysteresis of, of the conductance at different current, at different current condition. What you all see is the, the change, the change of the, the conductance represent the strength of the spin selectivity. After changing the same device to aluminum, to the aluminum electrode with much less spin coupling, you see the, this, Conductance change just reduced by 10 times. This is a strong su su suppression of the Smith selectivity. And 
then it's another is a way to directly verify our theory. And you can find more details in the <coughs> in, in this preprinter. And okay, this is about uh, transport. I said another way is we can use the light coupled to a chiral material. Oh Ben, how much time I have? Hi Ben. Do you uh, know how, how much time? Yeah, yeah, I sorry, left? I have to run up to you. Um, so you, you have uh, 19 minutes, including questions. Ah, great, great, yeah. thank you. Yeah, good. Yeah, well, let's talk about using chiral light coupled to a chiral material. And actually, this is not a new, new topic. Today is a standard technique, just to use circular dichroism, that is the selective absorption of this circular polarized light for, for the chiral material, especially chiral molecules. And the experiment synthesize some chiral molecular, then they just mirror the CD, how strong it is to characterize and <clears throat> how good the chirality is. This is a standard tool, like maybe like XRD to know the crystal structure for, for, for solid states. And this is a very established. And uh, there's also not only light absorption, there's also light emission, like uh, stimulate excite the chiral, chiral material with a UV light, then there will be uh, light emission after that. The emitted light actually is uh, circularly polarized. This circular polarization is directly related to the, to the chirality of the, of the molecular. Not only this uh, photoluminescence, there's also electroluminescence that's you make a PN junction, then inject a car electron hole inside. When electron hole recombine in this chiral, chiral region, the emitted light has a circular polarization. This is something well established. And then I, my purpose is I, I don't want to use like uh, this uh, orbital momentum locking to interpret this known phenomena. Actually, there, there's already well, well understood without this orbital momentum locking. Uh, my philosophy is if we have a theory that really matters, really important, overlooked before, it should bring something new. Instead, explain some old, old phenomena. Yeah. But I thought about it, but I don't, don't get a, a clear clue. Uh, very interesting is this, this happened like uh, last year in the, in the, in the winter, I get, I get an email from Dr. Li Wen from Europe and actually at that time, I gave a Zoom talk to an audience in Shanghai and about this chirality story. And then my Zoom link was redirected to, to Europe. And then I get a, get a call from Li Wan. He told me that he has an experiment in his PhD time and they, they could not understand the result, but the result is very strange, but this must, might be relevant to, to the orbital theory. And I explain later what they are doing in their lab. In their lab, they fabricate a special polymer. It's called a pi conjugated polymers. Anyway, it's chiral. They make the polymer has strong chirality, strong chiral structure. Then they can mirror the CD or the light emission. Like here, they use a, after the excitation, the emitted light gets circular polarized, polarized, polarized. The polarization rate, this they call it a G factor, is 0.4. What's that meaning of 0 0.4? 0 0.4 means for many molecular, or the ordinary molecular, the polarization rate is kind of in the order of 0.1% or 0.01%. But this new material is 40%. But this chirality enhancement, okay, is not the main point. For them, okay, at the beginning they thought, wow, this is a strong chiral material, fine, good. They use this material, fabricate a thin film. Then on two sides of the thin film, they put the electrodes if the electrodes match the work function, fine, they can inject electron hole into the, this chiral thin film. Electron hole recombine there, then get light emission. The emitted light is, is a circular polarized. And then on the right, because of the right, the right one, they use this uh, transparent electrode. I think it's ITO. Here, the emitted light also get, give you a very high polarization. This is a routine job in their lab. And also people believe if we want to change the chirality of the light, we should change the chirality of the thin film, just make a new device with obviously the chirality. That is always the, the, the date. Uh, then one day Li Wan made a slight change in the device. What is the change? 
but because mostly in their device, always the electron get get is injected from this transparent part. He massage the device to change it to change the current flow in the device. The hole come from the transparent part. Then the light get out from the same thin film. The light currently just flip. This is a very striking result. Striking in a way like. You see, there's a photon, photon flying out. Photon knows where the electron hole, they, they are originally come from, where the electron is coming from, the left or right. It matters how photons get the information of the charge current flow. Actually, all his PhD, he did a lot of further experiment to exclude other artificial effects. Unfortunately, in the end, they, they, in the end of his PhD, they, they, they did not get a full explanation about this phenomena. Uh, then, okay, here, from this current direction dependent light polarization, we already get a clue, you know, current direction means kind of momentum of this electron hole, and the circular polarization is related with the, with the orbital of the electron, right? There's already kind of orbital and momentum locking. Then let's go to see a little more detail. Oh, sorry, there's a problem with a little of the figure, but fine, doesn't matter. Like we started with the with the chiral molecular. We are already talked in the molecular there, we have opposite plane waves with opposite momentum. And this is a, in this figure is I just plot the occupied states and the empty states. Suppose this in this in this device, the electron and the hole are injected from opposite directions. This is a pin junction wave. And if electron come from the left because the orbital momentum locking, it will pick up an orbital, right? Has an orbital polarization. The hole has another orbital polarization. Then in this light emission process, we have a dart L, this uh, <coughs> angular momentum change. This angular momentum will be transferred to the light. Therefore, light is a circular polarized. If we flip the current flow, then the electron orbital just changes sign. Therefore, this dart L, this orbital transfer changes sign. They're not surprised the light changed the polarization. Okay, up to this point, fine. Looks well explain the experiment. But when I draw this figure, I ask myself, why I put the light propagation direction to the right? Okay, by, by textbook or something, we believe put it the light immediately to the left, to the right, or top down, doesn't matter too much. But let's just put it what we get. Suppose I put the light perpendicular to propagating to the left, but its angular momentum does not change. Delta L is still delta L. Therefore, the relation between delta L and the light momentum just uh, reversed. Therefore, by definition, the circular polarization changed the sign. This is the same for, for the <clears throat> for opposite current. That means now we get a light, we have a device, it starts to emit light. The light to the left and to the right, they have different polarization. This is like a kind of P wave light. Uh, but in another case, if the momentum, the electron come without any momentum, what happened? In this transition, actually, the orbital, there's no orbital transfer, actually, no net orbital transfer, because the electron hole, they don't have orbital polarization. This is the case, is the photon luminescence. We, for example, we excited, electron to the connection band with the light, then there's a no preferred momentum direction. In this case, there's no orbital transfer. Therefore, when emitted light to a different direction, the, what could happen is they will have opposite spin in total. The total, total spin are canceled to zero. In other words, the left figure D, this process, oh, sorry. This process is a higher order process. It's involved the charge dipole and a magnet, <coughs> ma <coughs> magnetic dipole, the dipole transition in this process is a higher order. On the right, this process, just the dipole recombination of the electron the hole, and the EC efficiency can be much higher. And by the way, it is true. This is just a theory. Like uh, this is the opposite direction has the opposite polarization. I asked Li Wen, is, is there a way to mirror in the device, in this pin junction device, to mirror the light from left direction. Unfortunately, he has. The trick is just make the metal side, although ordinary metal is not transparent, just make it thin enough. 
to five nanometer, then there will be light get out. What he found is exactly as we expect. The light from opposite direction, they will have opposite circular polarization. That is the same for, 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 for another current flow. Therefore, now actually we get a new phenomena here. The emitted light not only depends on the current direction, also on this light emission direction. Uh, okay, this actually, this is the, the, uh, almost the, the last slide. What I talked mainly is about this chiral molecular, uh, molecules uh, or chiral polymers, their consequence in light emission or in magnetic resistance in spintronics. And actually from molecular back to solid state system, for example, I want to highlight especially this twist by Leograffin or twist the Wadawars materials. Actually, by definition, they are chiral. Twist, the twist is chiral, right? And there could be very similar phenomena happening here. There may be interesting chirality and spin selectivity, and could be interesting light emission. And especially there's a superconductivity in the system, strong correlation. We combine them with the chirality or this is spin selectivity. There might be a lot of space for, for us to explore. Uh, okay, this is a summary. And I hope overall you can get a take home message is in a chiral molecular, either molecular or chiral solid. But there inside, when electron is moving, actually follow a tra chiral trajectory, it has a self rotation. This self rotation is, is orbital. Then orbital and momentum always locked. When it reverse, reverse the motion, it reverses the orbital. And actually, it has an interesting consequence in spintronics or light emission, and maybe there are more. Okay, I will stop here. Thank you for your attention. Okay, we'll take questions now. We have about eight minutes. For a very interesting talk. So I have a question. So now this is about uh, a molecule, but then if you go back to like a solid state material, like uh, yeah. for example, TMD with uh, two yeah. to Dirac bands with chirality plus and minus, and if you put those electrodes on the left and the right hand side, would you expect the uh, emission of uh, like a circular polarized light from there? Because uh, it seems yeah, like excellent question. Actually, I, I what we, we we found in the literature is. Exactly, it's the TMD you mentioned. Sorry, oh, I, I hope I put it right on the screen. Yeah, let me end up. Uh, exactly, there, there's, there's an experiment. Although the material is not exactly chiral, the material is WSC2, as if I remember. Yeah. There's an electrode. Okay. Inject electron and hole. I think this experiment was done in, in Japan. Yeah, actually, I'm a co author of this. <laughs> wow, wow. So Good, you are the expert. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I want to see is like I think your your experiment report. You have a light emission. The polarization depends on the current flow, right? Yeah. Still, there are some mystery about that experiment. So my yeah doesn't one hundred percent explain it. But now I think maybe it's related to your yeah yeah. Theory. Also, a little more. If you can check, I, I really strongly say check the if you have a way to mirror the light from the bottom. Mm. You mm. may see opposite polarization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, yeah, that's probably yeah. the case. Oh, okay. Yeah, by the way, I'm Takashi, so nice to meet you again. Oh, yeah, nice to see you. Yeah. Would you mind explaining that slide? Uh, on the uh, on the spin orbit coupled uh, elect uh, uh, spin coupled moment. I I try to rotate my slide now to the earlier. Yeah. Here. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I. Oh, even. Yeah. No. The, the the forward slide. Yeah. This one. This one. No, no, the, the previous one. Okay. Yes. This one? Yes. Yeah, one. please. Yeah, I just completely missed the explanation. How does it work? Ah, uh, uh, okay. You mean I, 
Okay, I'm happy to explain it again. Let's see. I let's see. I th this is a, this this picture A is like a, suppose we have electron injected from the left. Beginning, the electron has no polarization, no spin polarization, no orbital polarization. Yeah. From the metal injected to go through the molecular, it will become orbital polarized. But the spin is not polarized. Spin we still have left and right. Spin are equal. The, okay, from see. here to here is clear, right? Because oh, the yeah. structure is chiral. No, I guess I still don't get it. Why would it? Why would this happen? Uh, maybe I, I I should go to the earlier earlier slide. Uh, why I? Sometimes I can. Okay, can I move? Like this picture. Uh, you know, if I inject electrons, oh, sorry. If I pull some electrons, inject electrons, go through this chiral box and it's flying out to the right, from left to right. Can we understand on the right, that when electron flying out, it will orbital polarized, becomes plus. Same as the spin, the orbital polarization inside the box. I mean, I. I understand your claim, but you, you, never yeah. wrote on a, you never wrote down a Hamiltonian, so I don't understand. So you wrote down the wave function, but you never, you didn't, I say you didn't justify that the wave function is the eigenstate of any Hamiltonian. So I'm not sure how the, to. No, okay, repeat it, the, the justify one. I mean, you wrote down a wave function, which is a linear combination of plane waves, but it, it, you never explained that this wave function is, say, an eigenstate of a Hamiltonian of this so-called chiral box, so I'm not sure. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I understand. Like uh, I, I mean, I, I don't really solve the exact eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, the, the chiral potential. This is a, you, you feel a little like, like a, but yeah, yeah. therefore I, I like to like uh, just uh, to, to demonstrate it with a, with a concrete model. I think this model is clear, right? We have a chiral structure, like for example, a tight banding model. Yes. Well defined. We put x, y, z orbital there. We get us get some dispersion. Okay. What will happen is this is the opposite opposite momentum has opposite the orbital. First, there will be orbital of uh, polarization simply because inverse symmetry is broken. This is allowed. If there's an orbital polarization, k and minus k should be always opposite because we have time reversal symmetry. Okay. Yeah, therefore, this kind of opposite orbital and momentum relation, they, they are expected, right? Actually, this happens for almost uh, inversion symmetry breaking system. I guess, I guess what is the um, generic magnitude of LZ? Uh, Maybe LZ in another way. LZ is not a quantized number. I understand, but what is the the generic magnitude? Magnitude like, uh, let's see, for example, this model about uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, like, like the color bar I put here. That depends on system. Okay. Yeah. Like, like in, the, in the order of like a 50, uh, 30, 50%, but depends on the model detail. Okay, so suppose I, I believe this, then if we go back to your uh, filter explanation. Yeah. This one? Oh, okay. No, the, Plus here, yeah, right? One. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here, kind of, let's see, I put the structure, the band structure here. I have some plus orbital polarized, I have some minus orbital polarized. I kind of see when, when, I, when electron go through this system, when it go out, it will like to polarize the follow this state, right? Okay. Yeah. Then it's, this is the orbital polarization. This is how originally there's no polarization. When go through, we have an orbital polarization. But what is the, the role of the SOC? Yeah, the rule is also is that we have all the polarization, but we don't have spin. Spin left and right are same, equal now. 
but the SOC will feel the orbital polarization. Couple, you couple to SOC, you get a spin polarization. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is just as a translator from orbital to spin. I see. Because here we have to match the ferromagnetic electrode. This is the spin part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, good. You're very welcome. Great. So, uh, so let's thank the speaker again. Let's thank Ben Kai. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.